one of the biggest problems is going back to what I was talking about in 2001. When we had client server applications or we had mainframe applications, we were inside the firewalls and we were on a static stack of architecture. Things have changed. We're now dealing with the internet. Internet, the internet is one of those beasts that you, is very difficult to understand, but think back to the way we used to test. How do you test the internet when you're in a test lab? When every packet is sent and every packet is received in a test lab. How do you test your load balancers inside a, a test lab? So the network never got tested or the way the internet has worked. And so where the CDN file is actually placed actually matters in terms of overall performance. And so if you're, if you're a retail outlet, a global retail outlet, you might be using Akamai at different locations, but your file might be placed in the wrong location. Uh, network bandwidth, load balancer configuration, all of those kinds of things were not being tested by anybody that's testing inside of a firewall, inside a lab. It just doesn't happen. The other side of it is the infrastructure. You know, it, it was very difficult to always replicate uh, a real world platform or the actual deployment platform in a test lab because of cost. And so one of the bigger problems with, with websites, even the ones that have been tested, is the, the fact that they were tested in a lab where the infrastructure was quite a bit different than the actual deployment environment. And then finally the application and there's all kinds of different components. We're using dynamic content like Flash and HTML. We're just using a lot more advanced technology and problems can actually come from any and all of these things. One of the most important things about dealing with performance is that it's a cascade. So you may have an alarm, you may have monitors. Every one of us that, that do, does application deployment today uses something like a Wiley or a Tivoli or an OpenView behind the firewall at the infrastructure level. And externally, maybe out at the end user location, use Gomez or Keynote or Nimsoft or New Relic or those kinds of monitoring capability. And at the app level, you might use something like uh, App Dynamics or, or uh, uh, some of those types of tools. But the point of performance is that what you might see as a problem here or here is actually a cascade of problems that might have started in one location in your network, started to cause problems in your infrastructure, and eventually showed up in your application site. And the key to fixing the problems is understanding the multi-dimensions of that cascade, that, that performance cascade, as we call them in SOSTA. And so you need to have technologies that are able to understand all of the data, whether it's the network level, the infrastructure level, or the application level. And that's really what cloud testing is all about. Ultimately, cloud testing today is an enormous problem. It's a very difficult challenge for any of your teams to deal with, and certainly on a manual basis, to do it in a timeliness, in a timely fashion, to be able to handle the kind of business agility requirements that, that customers want us to do. So let's get in to talk a little bit about cloud testing, something we introduced back in, in 2008. This is a concept that is, is enabled, obviously, by cloud computing. So when I looked at this problem in 2001, and I'll tell you exactly why I started the company. A dinner in 2001 with Chase Manhattan Bank. I'm sitting there as, a, as an entrepreneur, had started this very uh, appealing, hot company called Dorado. Uh, we were signing up Chase Manhattan to handle all their mortgage, and they were the largest mortgage provider in the United States, home mortgage uh, provider in the United States. And, and, and Mike McKeenan, who was the, the, the guy that ran it, and I were having dinner right before he was about ready to sign the check, and he asked me as a vendor the question that no vendor really wants to hear. And that question was, I need to you to answer a hypothetical before I sign this $10 million check. No one wants to hear that, especially at dinner. Um, and the hypothetical was this. Tom, what happens if mortgage rates drop tonight and tomorrow morning at 7.30, 100,000 Chase customers hit your site, our site, are you going to be able to scale? This is 2001 where mortgage rates were actually dropping and that could actually have happened. And I had to tell him, I don't know. And he goes, how don't you know? I mean, I, I'm about ready to give you my entire business. And my answer was, the reality is there's no way of simulating 100,000 users. I would, have need, I would need 1,000 servers. And Jonathan Schwartz, who was the CEO of Sun at the time, was on my board of directors. And I said, I can call John up right now, but he only has 500 servers in his back room, I know for sure. So I, I could do 50,000 users. I couldn't do 100, 000, simulate 100,000 users. And that's not your biggest problem. If I, to do that, I would want Load Runner, Mercury's Load Runner product. 
and your deal's not big enough because for 4,000 users, it was a million dollars. I couldn't imagine what a 100,000 user license would be for Mercury in 2001, but it was certainly probably bigger than the deal that I was about to sign with him. So that, that was fun. Then the other problem was data because when you do a 100,000 user test and you want to aggregate and correlate all that data that I just talked about, whether it be network or infrastructure or application, you're gonna deliver terabytes of data. So handling the data to ultimately tell them whether it would work or not was gonna be problematic. So in 2000, I, this, this problem uh, bothered me for four or five years. Uh, be, talked to pretty much everybody in the Silicon Valley, pestered everybody in the Silicon Valley. How do you test these applications? How are you testing your applications? And the bottom line, we couldn't do it until cloud computing emerged. Now, cloud computing, for those of you that don't know, is based off a very, very simple uh, premise. Uh, you know, ultimately, it's based off of the fact that uh, the utility grid, uh, but at any given point in time, 87% of all compute capacity is not being used. So right now, there's 13% of all the servers in the world are being used, 87% of the capacity is not being used. So cloud computing was based off the concept of, let's give everybody access in a much more affordable way to that 87%. Amazon was the first to introduce it on the basis of access, availability, and affordability of infinite compute power. A, 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 little, a bit presumptuous on the infinite part of it. But on the other side, they began to sell server capacities at 10 cents a server hour. 10 cents a server hour, or 40 cents, depending on the size of the server capacity. And brought farms of thousands and thousands of servers and made them available. Suddenly, my problem of testing and having a requirement for 1,000 servers or 1,500 servers at any given point in time changed overnight. When I started talking to Werner Vogels at, in 2006, I began to see the opportunity. What cloud testing is, is simple this. The application, where your application is, whether it's a managed service provider, in your own data centers, or in the cloud, does not matter to us. Whether it's in a test lab or in production, does not matter to us. It's a target, and we can hit any application wherever it may be. The element of the cloud is load generation. The ability to generate or simulate millions, hundreds of thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands, whatever amount of users concurrently hitting a site or ramping up to a concurrency requires lots of servers, and the cloud enables me to uh, provision servers all around the world to simulate users in Hong Kong, in Europe, all throughout the United States, and hit a site wherever it may be. And we'll give some examples of this as we go forward. And all of it is controlled instead of by a, in Mercury's load runner case, a client server application, our application is actually an Ajax application. It's a web application. So our testers can be physically anywhere in the world. We have an office here in London with uh, a team of testers that frankly does a lot of testing on US sites because their middle of the day is at night in the States. And so it's a good way to test from in here in our London facility. But cloud testing is just that. You're using the cloud to leverage the cloud for load generation and data and managing the data. So here, here's how we do it. We use a, uh, a browser-based application. Our testers are in four different data, uh, uh, test centers, uh, centers of excellence around the world right now. Uh, three of them are in the United States. One of them are in London. Uh, and another one is being built right now in Asia. Uh, these, uh, these testers are some of the best performance engineers in the world. Uh, there's literally no one that has done tests the size the, of tests that we have done. And it's not really about test t testers. It's the fact that our testers are also ops guys. And that's really the important thing because they need to be able to not only build the test, but they have to understand the ramifications and network and infrastructure in correlation to the application itself. And so these testers literally will build from a centralized location your test for our customers. We particularly are good with dynamic content because we are an Ajax application ourselves as we go, and it's very intuitive and visual by nature and allows us to build very fast. The core of our product is, is the ability to provision in a platform that we built. Our platform is the largest test platform in the world, by far. It's not even close. We have over 150,000 servers in our platform. 
located all around the world to generate load from that our customers have access to or our performance engineers have access. Those servers generate and simulate load coming from all these different points around the world. And we can literally provision these environments in five to six minutes. What we're most known for is the analytics. At the core of it, my team has been building real-time OLAP engines for the last 15 years. Uh, this team built the first in-memory based OLAP or ROLAP engine back in 2002 and that was the basis of the Oracle BAM product. And when, it comes, when you come down to it, what performance testing is really all about is data. It's the proverbial trying to find the needle in the haystack. And when you, run a, when you have 100,000 users hitting your site and you have monitors capturing everything from CPU to memory to bandwidth to end user experience, you will generate somewhere in the order of three to five terabytes of data. Your latency will be something less than a megabyte and you have to find that and you have to find the correlation of that wherever it is coming from. So the ability to have a multi-dimensional view to the data and drill into it while the test is running. One of the things that is also controversial to lots of folks that have been in the testing business is that often we run our test on live production sites not just in the test lab, but on live production sites. And the only way that anybody would ever allow you to do that is if they felt they were getting the analytics that if they saw impact to end users uh, uh, performance because you're throwing 100,000 users at the site, you would be able to ramp it down in a very quick order. We're able to actually deliver an aggregated and correlated data set sub-second. And that allows no impact to your end users, but at the same time, the ultimate view into performance issues as you go forward. Some of the data, that, you know, these are just some of the, the charts. It's all about widgets, and, and the widgets are all individual performance metrics. Uh, if I had an iPad in front of you, I'd be able to show you how I can put uh, uh, um, actual uh, charts on top of charts, and that's the way you get a multidimensional view. So you might look at response time, and you want to see the load element on top of it. You want to see exactly what is happening with those users. What type of users? Is it one user downloading a Bruce Springsteen song? Is another uh, user actually watching a movie as they go forward? Then you can drill down even further and get into the error rates. You can get to speeds against uh, individual page loads. You're able to drill down to the lowest component. You're getting down to the message level so you understand exactly where your performance problems may occur. And then you have a global view. So if you're generating load from different places around the world, you're able to understand what's happening in those locations. And it may actually be because of hops or an ISP or your CDN in a physical location. So you have all types of views. You have the highest level view, and you drill down the lowest level view while the test is running, all with sub-second response time. The types of uh, tests, when and where, you know, we, we do tests that last an hour, we do tests that run like soak tests for 24 hours, and we do tests that go way beyond the 100,000 area. What you'll find is uh, when in the smaller tests that are shorter, you'll see a lot of code related problems, CPU, database, error rate issues. As you go out, you start seeing, as you get more and more load applied to the site, you start seeing load balancer and CDN related and bandwidth related issues. The other side of it is uh, in terms of um, uh, the scale of the test, we do lots of tests at high volumes and lots of tests at small vol volumes, and we believe in doing both. You, we ramp up very slowly to get to higher volumes, but it's, you, we see different types of errors at lower concentrated volumes ran over longer periods of times as we see run long term over shorter period or large amounts over shorter period of time. So all of these are enabled because of uh, uh, cloud computing. You know, our positioning is all about speed and scale. So the ability to get results set, not in four hours or four days, but to get it within a second or in milliseconds, and then to be able to scale out. So results and, and scale is the key to web application performance, and that's what cloud computing and cloud testing delivers.